Hey yo, what is going on it's your boy X coming at y'all with a brand new video and as you guys can see We're here with other tier lists this one on the power forwards list So if you guys are excited make sure you guys smash the like button down below for this as well as let me know who your favorite power forward in the game at this current time is if I'm being honest I probably don't have one there's a lot of cards that I really like so I'm, I'm not gonna say mine, but let me know who yours is down below if you guys want to check out the point guards shooting guards or small forwards tier list that we did drop Make sure you guys check those down in the description down below and without further ado Let's hop right into it with our first guy being the Sapphire Zion Williamson who Honestly for a free card ain't too bad. I'm not mad about it. I'm not excited about him You know, he's kind of one of those cards where it's like yeah, you could definitely use him in the beginning of the year. You could definitely, you know, have some usage with him. Um, he's a great finisher of the basket, but defense is literally non-existent. Uh, the post game is non-existent. His mid-range game is just awful. Uh, I think in the beginning of the year, when the game first dropped, he was probably around B tier. Um, but I think now as the game's gone on, he's definitely kind of, for me, fallen into the C tier. I feel like he's almost... D, but he's close. Yeah, he's he's a good card, but he's not by any means an amazing card. He's just very, very, very solid. Um, next up, we got Zebo, my guy Zach Randolph, one of the dudes that was hooping when I first started watching the NBA. My man's got a nice little, you know, six foot nine height, the power forward, and overall, um, his stats really aren't too bad. The main thing that hurts him are the fact that he's slow. Um, it just doesn't really have a lot of defense, but his post game is nice. He can shoot the three ball a little bit. He can finish inside at the basket. Great. But the thing is, is his badges really don't help him out. He only has like eight gold ones, I'm pretty sure, and like two bronze. And that's just, that's really not how you get it done. And I feel like this uh, Zach Randolph is definitely knocking below into the C tier as well. You know, we just, we can't have that lack of, you know, gold badges when we're trying to get some nice stuff going on. And next up, we got Tom Sanders, who is probably one of the more unique cards that we have in the game right now. And that's because Tom Sanders is a six foot six power forward, small forward, and has a 73 offensive overall, but an 89 defensive overall. So he's an insane defender. He even has silver clamps, like he is amazing. But his highest stat when it comes to offense is an 82 driving dunk. Everything else is a like 74 for this driving layup is his other highest. And everything else is like a 60 or below when it comes to offense, which is absolutely horrible. And even when it comes to his defense, he doesn't even have that good of tendencies when it comes to defense either. Has a horrible release, really doesn't have good animations. Um, hopefully, we get a better version of Tom Sanders later on in the year. You know, maybe we get a... Um, you know a diamond or a pink diamond later on i don't know if he did anything to deserve that but hopefully we get one later on because i feel like he could be a really nice um you know kind of slasher as well as defender for us in the game so hopefully we get a better one but right now he's got to get his ass down to d tier he's just he ain't really yet my guy next up we got my boy shane Battier, who's usually one of the better three and d players that we got in the game shane Battier usually just has that defense but this year, at least for this Emerald card, he does not have defense. Um, he has nice defensive stats, but no defensive badges. The only thing that he's really got is the Nicholas Batum base with an 81 shot three. Um, yeah, he really he just he doesn't pop out to me at all because all of his badges are in shooting, um, but he only has an 81 shot three. Um, and again, the main draw that you get for Shane Battier is his 3 and D ability, and he really doesn't even have defense like that either because we got, we got no clamps. So I think I'm probably going to knock Shane Battier down to C because I also I would not run him at the power forward whatsoever just because he just he doesn't have the rebounding for it, and he also does not have the defense for it either, man. It's just, he ain't my guy. Next up, we got Rashard Lewis, a card that I absolutely hated getting his XP challenges for. It was just so horrible, but he's six foot ten, which is a pretty nice size. You know, we got some good shooting badges, but when it comes to playmaking and defense, we literally have no badges. Um, he's not the fastest, but for what he does well, which is shooting, he does it pretty nice, and he's a decent finisher at the basket as well. It's just without quick first step, it's gonna take you a little bit to get there. And his jump shot isn't too bad. It's not great, but it's not too bad. I think it's shot, shot four, which is one of the better set shots, if I'm being honest. Um, and Richard Lewis, I feel like his ability to at least space the floor better than others 
um, we'll throw him up in here because you know he does have hot zone hunter um, and I think gold catch and shoot as well which really are some nice shooting badges and you know I think B tier fits him and same with Pascal Siakam I feel like this Pascal is another one of those cards that is hurt by lack of his gold badges but with Pascal Siakam the thing is is his playmaking is really decent he can shoot the three ball, kind of. He's got a good release as well. He can finish. He can just kind of give you a little bit of everything. And I think with somebody like Siakam, that's pretty important. I actually used Siakam in my um, domination grind for a while, and he helped out a bunch. Now, there also is a Kyle Lowry duo. Sadly, we can't really take that into account, but it does give him some nice boost. So if you are using this Pascal Siakam, I think it's definitely worth it to go ahead and pick up that Sapphire Kyle Lowry for a while until you inevitably get the Ruby. But still, very, very, very solid card. Next up, we have Luis Scola. My guy, Luis Scola, who is <laughs> honestly not my guy. I actually kind of dislike him a lot. But we have one off badge, and that's Putback Boss, which isn't horrible. He's got some nice, you know, gold badges as well to help him out. But the thing is, the defense is absolutely atrocious. He can rebound well and, I guess, set screens because he's got a brick wall. But um, the mid-range and three-point shot are okay, but no real badges to help him out. Um... Again, he's he's really not awful. It's just he's not amazing, um, if that helps anybody out. But he's got a really nice jump shot in uh, base 107. I like it. I think it's nice. Uh, I don't think it's amazing, but it's for sure not the worst one in the world. Uh, but I really don't think I can put this Luis Scola any higher than, like, B tier. Uh, he's, like, he's good, but he's really not somebody that I'm, I realistically see myself using for longer than a, a minute or two next up we got Kenyon martin and we're gonna like we always do we're taking him into account after his evo so at his amethyst which is really nice because he's six foot nine and he just has a bunch of beautiful beautiful sets 16 gold badges will help him out in everything and i think if this Kenyon martin had some sort of clamps he'd be amazing but this Kenyon martin is up there with like ben wallace as one of the best rebounders that i've used like in the entire game which is crazy he has a respectable midi and an insane post game 98 post fade and post hook he also has a 98 standing and driving dunk as well so i think when it comes to how well he can rebound how well he can play in the post his nice midi and his just amazing finishing ability i think we can throw this kenny martin up into a tier after evo i think before evo he definitely would probably take a step down to that b tier maybe but this kenny martin is for sure for sure an absolute beast of a card that a lot of people got to give some love because he's just overall super quality like super quality and next up we got Coral Malone which um I've seen a lot of people dogging dogging my guy Coral Malone for a little while but he's honestly he's definitely not terrible I've seen a lot of people say that he's absolute buns he's trash but it's really he's really not too bad when it comes to just being you know, a back to the basket big. He's really good at that. He can play some nice defense. He can rebound the ball pretty well as well. And has a nice contact finisher, relentless finisher on Hall of Fame as well. So, well, he's not going to be your absolutely insane, like, take over the game kind of guy or, you know, shoot the three ball like crazy. If you have a nice coach boost, you can get him up to a 70 shot three, which is that, you know, tip off mark for being consistent. He can finish in the basket nice with 85 and both standing and driving dunk. Has a nice post game and nice defense. So, I think overall, there's a lot of things to like about him. And I'm going to throw him B. I feel like he's not an insane power forward by any means, but he's definitely very, very, very solid. And one that some people, you got to give a shout out to him because he's definitely uh, better than some people think he is. Uh, next up, we have Jermaine O'Neal, who is uh, honestly kind of a dog. He's got three all the fame badges, post being technician, brick wall, and moving truck, all really, really solid. But the thing is, he doesn't have any form of intimidator or rebound chaser as a power forward or center and if i'm being honest this jermaine o'neal is kind of meant to be more of a center because he's six foot eleven and very slow so he's kind of meant to be that you know i guess center kind of guy <laughs> but he's a little bit slow um has a nice post game has some nice finishing ability with some decent finishing badges but like is the case with a lot of these pink diamond token market cards they really are not giving them all the badges that they need to be great there's a lot of diamond token market cards that have like 30 gold badges and my god jermaine o'neal has 16 badges in total as a pink diamond i honestly don't feel like i can really move jermaine o'neal any higher than a tier um, I feel like he plays at A tier because he has insane post game and finishing, but 
yeah, he really just doesn't have anything to bring him higher than that. And Isaac Austin, probably one of the worst cards in the entire game. He's a meme. Get him ass. He had his ass down into D tier, man. He is so, so, so bad. He literally just does not do anything well. Is a complete waste of tokens, if we're being honest. Like, you just, you can't go ahead and pick up yourself an Isaac Austin. Like, come on now. But next up, we do have Hot Rod Williams, who is a nice finisher and really good rebounder. Um, defense isn't really too great. He can't shoot at all. He <laughs> only has a 60 midi, um, and he is a little bit slow despite being a good finisher. Um, I don't think he is bad on the level of Tom Sanders and Isaac Austin, but he is bad. So I will throw him into the C tier, but I, I do feel like he is absolutely terrible and definitely worse than these three guys, but not to the point where he's as bad as Tom Sanders and Isaac Austin because Tom Sanders can only play defense isn't a complete non-factor on offense and Isaac Austin is just a non-factor in general so you know there we are and next up we have Horace Grant probably one of my least favorite cards in the entire game I have to you have to get like rebounds and blocks with them as XP challenges and it's absolutely awful but Horace Grant is six foot ten and he should be decent but the thing is the only thing he can really do is play defense and rebound but he has a 62 block so you have to get like 25 blocks of them and you can't even do that because his block is horrible he only has a standing dunk when it comes to finishing no driving at all he has a 34 speed so he is so slow only a 78 midi but i will say he does have the brook lopez base so that midi is actually fire but yeah, this Horace Grant card is is horrible. Uh, is absolutely horrible. I want him into D tier because of how much he upsets me. Absolute trash. Like, I do not want him at all. And next up, we have Giannis Antetokounmpo, who is honestly a pretty nice card. But for some reason, I just wasn't feeling like Giannis was as cheesy this year as he was in previous years. Like, he was good, but he wasn't like break the game good which was interesting and there's a lot of cards that i feel like are on his level this year that like in the beginning of the year this Giannis was like one of the best in the game period but i feel like this year has a lot of cards that are very equal to him and again i think it has a lot to do with the lack of Giannis's goal badges he's really quick he's nice his playmaking is pretty decent he can shoot the midi but can't really shoot the three and his defense is good because he's got silver clamps and basically every single badge besides pickpocket but they're all bronze and silver badges as well so i think honestly I'm putting Giannis into the A tier. I really just don't think he's got what it takes to sneak up into the S tier right now. Um, maybe if we get a Giannis card later in the year that's you know, a little bit juicier, I feel like he'll be great. But right now, I just, I'm just i not failing him. And next up, we have Drew Gooden, who the same thing kind of applies. Um, he has some nice rebounding um, and pick setting ability. <laughs> but other than that, his defense is basically non-existing. He's got a nice midi and shot three, but no finishing whatsoever in the post or anything like that he has no playmaking he has no speed like a bad jump shot he's got nothing going for him he's going down there with horace grant as like a, i would probably rather shoot myself in the foot than actually use them in the game no thank you and draymond green our first card not can up in to the s tier i absolutely love this card and this is kind of why i didn't want to put Giannis into a tier either is i mean into s tier either is because i don't feel like Giannis is on par with this draymond green Draymond Green, I think, had one big negative, which is his foul tendency, which I definitely am not a fan of, but Draymond has some awesome animations, has some amazing stats overall, including Hoff, defensive leader, intimidator, post and blockdown, and tireless defender, and even has Hoff Dimer, which is massive, has some nice shooting badges to help him there, has some decent finishing, which is awesome, some really good playmaking for a guy that's, you know, a power forward at this point in the year, uh, and even has silver clamps right off rip. Now, the one thing that does hurt Draymond Green is his rebounding is not as great right now, but even then, with all of his amazing, you know, badges that he already has now, I don't feel like there's anything lower than S. And if we're talking about badged out Draymond Green, you can add quick first step to him, you can add a range extender and all that sort of stuff. So while we're not really taking that into account, I'm just letting you guys know, if you were to badge out this Draymond Green, he's in competition for one of the best cards in the entire game. But even without, he's still definitely an S tier power forward. And next up, we got Danielle Marshall, who is another one of those, like, he's coming in to shoot threes, and that's really about it. Like, that that's 
kind of the only reason why you want him, you know, really just to shoot a lot of threes, which isn't bad. You know, he's six foot nine, and he has a lot of really nice um, shooting badges as well to help him out, and he even has some stuff to help him rebound, set screens, that sort of thing when it comes to his uh, silver badges for defense. So, I think for what he does, he is really, really good at it. But it's not exactly the most unique thing. So I think B tier is where he belongs because he's kind of on par with like Richard Lewis for me. Like they're just there to shoot some threes, do nice there, and that's really about it. And next up, we got Dennis Rodman, who I was not impressed with him when he dropped, and I'm still not impressed with him now, man. He's got five Hall of Fame badges, which are amazing, and Brick Wall, Moving Truck, Rebound Chaser, Child Spender, and Worm. Like, really, really good badges, and has amazing defense and rebounding, but then he has no form of clamp, so you're not really stopping anybody on the perimeter. He's only good playing defense in the paint. He has really good finishing stats, but then not a lot of good finishing badges. He can shoot the midi but doesn't have any badges for shooting, so that's a little bit tough, and he's decently quick, um, but his tendencies, the only one that's good is his take charge tendency, he has an awful jump shot, some not great dribbling moves, he really just, to me, isn't that amazing of a player, and in saying that, I feel like Dennis Rodman might have to land in the B tier for me, because I feel like I would definitely rather take um, Kenyon Martin, who has good deep not as good a defense as Dennis Rodman but is significantly better on offense same thing with Jermaine O'Neal and Giannis is just better at everything else but defense than Dennis as well so I really just think he doesn't fit up into A tier um, next up Dave DeBusher a guy that does fit up into A tier my absolute guy Davey boy my man I'm telling you my favorite card just I think in general in the game, but I run him more as a small forward, so I don't really consider him a power forward. But Dave DeBusher, oh man, is he a beast. 6'6", six 6'9", six, six wingspan, is a nice midi, a nice shot three. I love his jump shot. Comes with gold clamps, which is huge at this point in the year. 85 standing and driving dunk, but albeit not the most finishing badges that I would like. All around defense is amazing. Besides the perimeter, it was only a 66, but he's got that gold clamps and pick dodger to really help him out there. I just love this Dave DeBusher card, even as a good post game as well. So when you get a nice mismatch, you can just drop step into the paint and be perfectly fine. What I loved about Dave DeBusher was the fact that I could take him and throw him on to, you know, a Magic Johnson or something like that at this point in the year. And you would honestly clamp up, hold the zone, and be perfectly fine. So I think for that reason, you gotta you gotta put Dave DeBusher up in there. I absolutely love him. And next up, we have Cliff Robinson. RIP to one of the NBA's legends. It's uh, sad to see you go. Uh, my apologies, guy. But in saying that, your cord isn't so good. I know we're going to get a vet very good version of this Cliff Robinson, but this Emerald ain't it. I'm going to throw him down to D tier. But RIP Cliff Robinson, if you got into this point in the video, it's uh, sad to see one of our NBA legends gone like that, man. Um, next up, Chris Weber. He's a diamond. Who? Again, there's no more of those cards. Definitely not too bad. He's got break starter, post pick technician, and rebound chaser all on Hall of Fame. And I think I said this when my video dropped on the stats of these cards. The thing that you get with Chris Weber is insane offense and like fast break ability as your power forward. But you don't really get a lot of, I guess, defense. You get a lot of rebounding, you get a lot of post game, a lot of finishing at the baskets, a nice and capable three pointer as well and some decent playmaking like you get everything when it comes to offense and rebounding but the defense is a little bit lackluster but i st still think even with that we can throw you know chris weber up in the a you know he plays like i guess kind of like Giannis, just with a little bit worse perimeter defense if that makes sense uh next up carl landry is also getting his ass in a d tier i just absolutely hate this card like get out of here i can't i do not want you no thanks you your buns nobody actually realistically is picking you up to use you sorry and Billy Cunningham is kind of like the same story for me as a David DeBusher. I love this card. And I think it's one of the only diamond token market cards that I've picked up at this point, um, despite being able to pick up one more. And the great thing about him is the one thing that hurts is he doesn't have gold clamps like David DeBusher, which makes Dave a little bit better to me. But his finishing badges are absolutely insane. Has a 90 standing and driving dunk, which is godly. Has some good post game with post big technician and dream shake which help him out massively, and I mean massively. So, oh, and he also has drop stepper as well, so that will really help him. He has good rebounding and gold rebound chaser as well. Has a Blake Griffin jump shot, which if your timing with square 
is an okay jump shot but i think if you're using the stick for it um in any form that you're using the stick it is such it's a little bit of a slower release which makes it amazing and i mean amazing to time so i absolutely love it but his one negative is the fact that he has the lebron james scoop layup package which is a little bit tough uh, but still very 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 solid card and fits up into the a tier bailey howell you already knew he was going up into the s tier like come on now my guy bailey howell is just a god he's got the trey Burke base he's got silver clamps has some solid defense overall he can shoot the three ball like crazy with that <laughs> trey Burke base you gotta love it he can pitch the basket great and just do everything very very solid especially for a power forward personally i prefer him as a small forward but he works at anything right now because we really don't have too tall of players. So overall, very, 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 very solid card. And next, we have Antonio Nick Dice. My guy, 13 gold badges, got a bunch of finishing, um, but everything else is pretty lackluster. We got good finishing, good post game, um, but the defensive stats are great, but he doesn't really have a lot of badges to really, I guess, enforce that. Like, he doesn't have Intimidator. Um, has a good midi, but not a good shot three. He's a little bit slow. For me personally, and I would just kind of put him as like, you know, Carl Malone-esque, you know, Carl Malone level. Like, you know, good card, but not not, not, not top tier at all. Next up, we have Anthony Davis's base card, which is a very, very solid card because he's 6'10 with a 7'5 wingspan. And again, just has the benefit of having a lot of good stats and a lot of good badges, but low badges. You know, we don't have anything above silver for Yana. For Giannis or Anthony Davis which I think hurt their ratings a little bit and the Anthony Davis release is a little bit slow but again for the stick it makes it amazing so for me personally I feel like Anthony Davis isn't as dominant as he could be and B tier is where I'm sticking him I just I'm saving room for a better Anthony Davis card because as soon as we get an Anthony Davis card with a few gold badges it's immediately at least an A tier and probably an S tier card and this Anthony Davis really just doesn't give me the same feel um, right now as his previous cards have um, next up we got my guy ac green who again is one of those cards that really is only there to give you defense and not a lot of offense like at all like he has 75s for his post game his dunking it doesn't go above 69 for driving and has a 50 on a standing dunk has a 60 mid range a 60 mid range and three point shot which are just horrible has two finishing badges back down punisher and put back boss and everything else is defense but he doesn't have clamps so he's not playing defense really outside of the paint um, for me ac green again i just i can't warrant putting him any higher he just he really can't score for you at all <laughs> like at all he's really just had to play defense um, but next up we got my guy Nene, who again was a beast when I was uh, first watching the NBA, so I have a I have a soft spot for him. But with Nene again, he's just kind of meant to be um, a lob threat and defender and rebounder, but doesn't have the greatest of defense either. Really, he's just a lob threat and a rebounder. So um, again, I don't think he's as bad as these guys that we got down at D tier. So C tier, I think, is where he lands. Um, solid card if you want just a rebounder and guy that's gonna rim run for you. But other than that, he really doesn't give you um too much and i think if i were being realistic here out of the guys that we got in d tier horace grant is definitely better than them so if i had to make a change and take away my personal hatred for how hard the xp challenges are just because they they show the bad parts of horace grant he's actually not a like d tier worthless card but he's not an amazing card which is what the c tier is for and i think overall this is what our list is uh looking like we have a lot of really 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 solid cards i would use anybody probably from pascal siakam up absolutely love all of these guys and even then some of them are still very usable in their own niches like Danielle marshall and shane battier very 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 solid cards let me know what you guys think about this list down in the comment section below make sure you guys like if you guys did enjoy and subscribe if you guys are new on that road to 10k subscribers i hope you guys have a great day and i will see you all in the next video